Welcome to my video. Today I'm going to talk about async and await keyword in C-sharp. I'll explain what are these two keywords and in which context it's used. We will also learn what input bound and CPU bound needs are and how async and await help us to implement these two needs or scenarios in a program. But before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon. That way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Async and await in C-sharp. Async and await are two keywords introduced in C-sharp 5.0 for asynchronous programming. So whenever we want to write the asynchronous code, we can opt these two keywords. Okay, let's understand what is async and await. Async is a modifier whereas await is an operator. When an async modifier is applied to the method, that method becomes an async method. The async method is the method that has none blocking code. The await operator is applied to the return task or an expression. It gives control to the caller of the await method and it ultimately allows the UI to be responsive or the service to be elastic. In simple words, the await keyword signals the code to wait for the return of a long running operation. With async and await keyword, we can perform an asynchronous operation with each. If a method that uses an async modifier does not contain await operator, it means it is going to be executed synchronously. So together, async and await help us to write code in an asynchronous way. Await operator works in the context of async only. So whenever we want to use the await operator, make sure that we use inside the async method. Okay, we knew what is async and await in C-sharp, right? So now we will focus on which scenarios async and await keywords can be used. So there are two important scenarios, CPU bound needs and input output bound needs. CPU bound needs means whenever we want to perform CPU intensive operations such as performing an expensive operation or time consuming work. Whereas input output bound needs means a condition in which the time it takes to complete a computation is determined by the period spent waiting for the I/O operation to be completed. For example, requesting data from a network or accessing a database or reading and writing to a file system. In these two scenarios, we can use async and await keyword to execute the code asynchronously. So here we are on Visual Studio. So I have written one program where I have not used async and await keyword, right? So I just want to show you how much time this program takes to get executed, right? So for that, I have written this main method, right? And I have printed this statement that I am just, you know, giving this demo for async and await in CSAF without async and await keyword. Right. So here I'm not going to use this async and await. We, we will witness how much time this program uh, takes to get executed. Right. So for that elapsed time mapping, I mean, how much time it took, I am just going to use this stopwatch. That's what I have, you know, created one instance of this stopwatch class. And then I have started stopwatch.start. Right. stopwatch.start. There is three method call, right? Method one, method two, and method three. Method one is nothing but a static method that has no input parameters, but it has one return type as a void, right? And basically this method is just printing console.write line printed from method one. And it is making thread sleep for the 5,000 millisecond, right? It means five seconds. Similarly, method two, it is coming, uh, it is, is making thread for three second. Method three is making thread sleep for this six second, right? So all these are a static methods. So whenever we are going to use this method, we are we are not going to uh, instantiate the class. We can directly use that. That's what I you know I just kept it for simplicity. Uh, method as a static. Okay. So here what I'm doing, I'm just calling one by one method. Method one, method two, method three. Right. And then once this method, all these methods got executed, then I'm just going to stop. I'm just going to stop a stopwatch, right? Using this stop method. And then how much time it you know took to execute this three methods? I'm just going to you know print it into this console window using this statement. For that, I am just going to capture this time elapsed millisecond. With the help of this obj stopwatch dot ls millisecond property right it will give me that actual time it took for executing these three methods okay so let me execute this okay if you see the output has started you know appearing into this console window printed 
from method one it got executed printed from method two got executed printed from method three got executed right so and then execution time is one four zero two eight millisecond it means fourteen thousand twenty eight millisecond it took time for executing these three methods method one method two method three right where we have not used async and await key right okay now we are just going to use async and await the same program after modifying those things okay okay so here we have converted to the uh, program with the help of async and await right so here i have implemented a async and await key if, if you notice this is the same program where we have this stopwatch class instantiation and then we are you know calling this start method for the stopwatch and the last we are stopping this stopwatch and then we are printing the elapsed time into this console window right and here i am calling method one method two method three and uh, we are just giving instruction to the compiler to wait until this method one method two method three completes then give the control to the next step that's what this task dot wait on method does right if you see this method level method one method two method three i have converted as a async method that's what i have used this async modifier and the return type is the task because we have used this task dot delay right and we have you know uh, put this await operator against that so this is just going to return as a task and in the next statement i am just you know printed console dot right line printed dot method one method two method three like that right same program but here we have used async and await now i'm just going to execute this program and see how much time it takes for executing this method one method two and method three right combined time okay so let me execute this program okay if you see the output you know got appeared to this console window right you know print printed from method two printed from method one printed from method three if you see it is not executing into the sequential method if the method that is taking you know this time it got executed first then second one then third one so method two as a first statement it printed method one method three and if you see the execution time it took 6150 millisecond right if you remember the first time when we have not used async and await keyword it took me 14,028 millisecond right here just half less than half right 6150 milliseconds so it is evident that whenever we are going to use async and await keyword right so we are going to execute this program in less time async and await example for cpu box okay let's see the example here where i have used async and await keyword for cpu bounding to make the code asynchronous okay let's understand it here we have main method which is an entry point of the application in this method i am calling my method then printing some text into the console window right if you see this my method i have applied async modifier so this method becomes async method and we want this async method executes asynchronously so we will have to use await operator that's why i have used this await operator against this time consuming task right so i wrote await task dot run new action time consuming work right so here action is nothing but the delegate action delegate where we are passing this time consuming work that has void return type right because the action delegate accepts i mean that point to you know that method that has void return type right so that's what i have used this new action time consuming work so if if you are not aware about that action delegate and all those things we have already you know created one video separately for it so you can go and you know refer that anyway so I have written task dot run new action time consuming work right so please note that we use await with task dot run for executing the CPU bound scenario only we should not use task dot run for input output bound scenario anyway if you see time consuming work method it's a static method and there is a for loop that iterates one hundred thousand times and it keep adding all numbers in result variable and at last it prints the result into this console window. It takes some time to execute this time-consuming method, right? So in my method, I wrote 
console.write line, right? This is statement. Some work is started getting processed after the completion of time consuming work method, right? After the await statement. That means that this console statement won't get executed until this time consuming method completes. And meanwhile, the, at the point where this await statement is there, it returns the control to the caller method. In this case, that is the main method. And that's what this next statement is going to get executed. The other work is getting processed outside of my method without waiting for my method to be complicated. Completed, right? So this console statement is going to get printed into this console window, right? That's the one simple example. If you see the output, the first statement, my method is getting executed. This got printed. Why? Because in main method, we are calling my method. And here the first statement is itself is my method is getting executed. That's why this statement got printed as a first statement, right? The second statement, if you see other work is getting processed. This statement is coming from the main method, right? After the my method call, we have written this console.write line other work is getting crossed. So this statement got printed as a second statement into this output window. Why? Because this my method contains this console.write. This got printed and then we have issued await a statement, right? Await a statement is just call this time consuming work and this time consuming work is getting executed in background meanwhile this control gets transferred to again main method and that's what this next statement got printed and that's what if you see the second statement it is coming from the main method itself right now the third statement result from time consuming work method and that is the number right so this is coming from the time consuming work method after iteration we got the result then that result got printed into this console window right and that's what this third statement is coming from the time consuming work and once this time consuming work gets completed then the next stated a statement console.write line this one some work is started getting processed after the completion of time consuming work got printed into this output window that is the fourth statement so did you see how the flow is going Okay, let me repeat it again. Okay, the first we have called this my method and that's what the control comes into this my method, right? The first statement got printed and then the second await a statement issued, right? So at the task, it just called this time consuming work and this time consuming work has started processing. Meanwhile, this await operand makes sure that the transfer return control returns to the main method, right? And that's what that control goes to the you know main method and the second statement got printed right and that's what you are able to see the second the third statement because the next statement here it is not going to get printed until this time consuming work completes right so that's what this time consuming work iterated 100,000 times and then we got the result variable and that result variable data got printed into this console right line method right and that's what the third statement came and then when this task got completed then fourth statement which is nothing but console.write line some work started getting processed this statement got printed as a fourth statement so you have seen how a sync and await works for the cpu bound need right here we are in visual studio the same programs i have written over here where we have this main method we have my method then we have this console write line statement and console dot read line my method it is nothing but the async method because we have added this async modifier to it so it becomes this async method and we want this my method to be executed asynchronously that's what i have used this await keyword this await statement is having task dot run new action time consuming work basically this task is calling this time consuming work right and this time consuming work is nothing but a method that has void return type and it iterates for loop 100,000 times and keeps adding the number into this result variable and at the last it just printing this number into this console dot write line and the console window by this console dot write line so the same program it is here let me execute this output got appeared into this console window if you see the my method is getting executed right so 
so this method is coming from this my method right my method is getting executed because the call from the main method my method is getting called and the control comes here and this console dot right line my method is getting executed you know got printed into this console bin then this await statement is there task dot run light time consuming bus but this time consuming work is taking some time meanwhile this await operand makes sure that control goes to the you know main method right and that's what this main method you know receive the control and this second statement this other work is getting processed outside of you know my method without waiting for my method to be completed this statement got printed from the main method right and the third one got printed from this time consuming work right because if you see here this is the time consuming work right result from time consuming work method and result whatever the number you know added into this result variable that got printed as the third statement over here right and the fourth statement this is the some work is started it is coming from the my method because uh, this task once completes then this control is going to get executed this a statement some work has started getting processed and that's what the fourth statement got printed right so we have seen how to use async and await in csha for the cpu bound need and how the you know control moves from here to there and you know works gets done right so we have seen how to use async and await in csha for the cpu bound need async and await example for input output buffer so here we will be seeing the example where i have used async and await keyword for input output bound need to make the code asynchronous okay so let's understand this example here we have main method which is an entry point of the application at a starting point i have you know just printed this statement demo async await in csha for input output bound and then we have called this method one right method one whatever the output that we are receiving we are storing into this task in variable named result right if you see this method one method which is nothing but the async method because i have applied this async modifier to it the return type is task end. and if you notice i have used the await keyword so this method one will behave as async method right and it will be executing asynchronously so let's understand it this method one method what it does okay so here at the first statement i have you know declare and initialize this variable int int count is equal to zero in the next statement i have you know created an object of this http client class and then i have just you know, just printed inside the method one statement in the next statement i am just you know calling get a string async method of this http client class where i have you know just pass this url of the microsoft documentation right the next is a statement i am just you know printing inside the method one just now http client return the html string then we are you know calling this method perform dependent work as a string length count str html where we are passing the str html as an input parameter and this str html is nothing but the output that we are received from this get string async method, right if you see this method perform dependent work as a string length count where we have you know receiving input as a string str what we are doing we are just you know using this length property and then whatever the length we are you know identifying that we are returning those result going to get captured into this int count variable that we are returning from this method and the result and that result that we are printing into this console window result dot result variable right so the, overall this is the program that we have written for async and await example right if you see the output over here the first demo async and await in csa for input output bound that got printed that we have you know written the first statement right and then it is printing inside the method one. so because here we are just you know calling this method one it just go uh, went to the method one and inside that i have a I have this console dot write line statement right inside the method one that got printed. And then we call this HTTP client right HTTP client get a string. So meanwhile, this method is getting executed. Control you know return to this main method. The next statement you know got control and that's what this next statement got printed into the console window. That's what you are seeing this here in this second line into this output window right printing from the main method right and the third statement because it is using the result variable result is nothing but the method one is returning as a 
but this method one is still executing so this statement will wait right so method one statement like you know inside the method one just now http client return the estimate so once this method got executed we got this output and this method you know print going to get printed so next statement if you see here in the third statement inside the method one just now http client return the html string it got printed right and then after this statement got printed into this output window we have called this you know method perform dependent work as a string length count and we have passed this strst and this method is returning this you know count and this count is you know returning to the this method one right and that result is having that value and that's why this statement received a string length result whatever the result is there i mean the count of this you know a string that got you know printed into this console window as a last statement received a string length is equal to 62815 right so whenever we are going to have this input output bound need we can opt async and await for asynchronous operation right so for http client this is nothing but a system dot http net client basically it's a built-in class from microsoft right similarly there are other classes also right where we have such type of async method we need to use those async method with the await keyword so that we can make this method asynchronously called right so yeah that's all for this async and await example so we can see all those things in action in visual studio so here we are on visual studio so i have written the same programs into this window visual studio program.cs right we have main method we have you know calling this method one in this method one you know calling this http client instantiation and calling this get string method inside that we have this perform dependent work as a string count where we are passing this str html which is nothing but the output of this method right and here we are you know giving counting the length and then we are returning to this calling method and this int count again it is just getting returned to this calling method which is nothing but the method one of that result is getting captured into this result variable and that result is getting you know printed into this result window right okay so let me execute this program okay so output has started you know appearing into this console. so this is the expected output we we have already seen right so inside the method one printing from the method inside the method one just now http client return the end at the last we are receiving this receive the string length is equal to six to eight one this is the way how we are going to you know use async and await for the input output important points about async and await in c here we are going to discuss about important points about async and await in c -shop. so whenever we are going to use async and await in c -shop, so what are the points that we need to keep in mind while using it right so these points are very much important you need to understand it Okay, so what first point says async method needs to have an await keyword in their body or they will never read right what does it mean whenever we are going to mark method as async method we need to have await keyword if you are not going to use await keyword inside the body then this async method that basically not an async method it is going to get executed synchronously not asynchronously so if you want to perform method to operate as an asynchronous way we need to use async and await keyword right in the same method async will be work as a modifier and await will work as an operate operand sorry operator into this particular body of that particular method right okay the next statement says whenever when the await keyword is applied it suspends the calling method and its console back to its caller until the awaited task is complete we have already seen with couple of the example right how the control return back to the caller method until the awaited task is complete right the third statement says async code can be used for both input output bound and cpu bound code but differently for each scenario right we have already seen with the example right for the input output bound right for the cpu bound code also right for input output bond we await an operation that returns a task that returns a task or task template inside of the async method 
right we have already seen for cpu bound code we await an operation that is started on a background thread with the task.run method right we have some you know uh, the work that needs to be executed that work we are going to execute it as a background thread and that's what we are going to use task.run method Please note that in input output bound, we should not use task.run method, which is nothing but from the, it is coming from the task parallel library, which is called TPL, right? So we should not use a task.run method into the input output, right? It is very, very important. We need to keep into, into the mind. Okay. okay. So you will be thinking, what is the use of async and of it and how the, you know, compiler understand what, what, you know, operation he needs to perform whenever you are using this async and await keyword. So what happens in C sub compiler side when we use async and await keyword, right? So the compiler transform our code into a state machine that keeps track of the things like yielding execution when an await is reached and resuming execution when a background job is finished. So those things, you know, uh, it, it just, you know, remove the burden from your head and the compiler performs on behalf of you. Right? So you don't need to juggle those things, you know, with the help of your code. You just use async and await, the compiler will take care of it. So these are the important points, right? Okay, so that brings me to end of my session. To sum up, in this video, we have learned what the async and await keywords and how to use them writing asynchronous methods in an application, right? We also saw, saw that what input output bound and CPU bound needs are how async and await help us to implementing these needs through examples right finally we talked about important points about async and await in c sharp and its internal working at the compiler side right that's all for today if you like this video hit the like button share it with your friends and colleagues subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already thanks for watching see you next video